Others still suffer acutely from anxiety or depression, making this season more difficult. And others still have circumstances or situations that we have not named. But that doesn't make this time of year any easier. So tonight we acknowledge the complexity of this time and season and worship together on this longest night. I invite you to join with me in a call to response, call to worship as we as we praise God through John 1, 1 through 5. <coughs> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things come into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing can be to be. Through Him we have life, and the life was the light of all people. This light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. I invite us to stand and sing our hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
and that we are seeking throughout this season. And so I invite you to join with me in the lighting of our Advent wreath, again, a call and response. We light our first candle, a single light that the deepest darkness in this world cannot conquer, small, insignificant, yet a sign of hope. Let this light speak to us of the tiny flame of hope that remains within us, the stubborn little light that refuses to be extinguished by all that life has thrown at it. It is hope sustained and made possible by our faith. We light the second candle, a companion to the first equally small and insignificant Yet it is a sign of our journey through this season. It is a symbol of the peace that we are assured of by our faith, and it is supported by our hope. Let this candle's light speak to us of companionship, that we are never alone, for God is with us. Let this candle remind us of the peace we can find when we are assured of God's presence in our lives, through Jesus Christ's birth, and through those in whom that presence is reflected. We light the third candle, another light piercing the darkness, making the space a little brighter, and know that it symbolizes the joy in our lives. Joy often found in unexpected times and unexpected ways, but we seek it and find it in our renewed heart, body, mind, and soul by its very presence. Let this candle's light speak to us of the sureness of the sunrise, of the passing of darkness. Let it speak of the joy found in our faith. Let it remind us of the joy found in being together in the healing presence of God and in the lives of all whom we have been blessed to encounter throughout our own life's journey. And here we pause and we stop. <clears throat> For we are not yet done on our Advent journey. We know that we have yet to light the candles of love and of Christ. But we have gathered tonight recognizing that every single one of us is going to be on a different spot of our own journeys, and we own that on this longest night. So I invite you to stand and sing our hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
often as people of faith we turn to the scriptures to seek and find those moments that match our own life circumstances. And while you hear the scriptures being read by the, by the many who are reading tonight, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect and pray, either for your own situation, for times where you have been in such a circumstance, or for others who you know who are facing those moments themselves. Let us hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. Our first reading comes from Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 24. One of the dinner guests, on hearing this, said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they, all alike, began to make excuses. First said to him, I have a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and the lanes and compel people to come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. This story offers hope for those who have no one to invite them in. It reminds us that God's divine order, no one is excluded. All are invited. Lord, our God, may your fellowship be available to all, including those who feel excluded.
told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled from his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Moreb, the mount of God, and at that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. And there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall appoint Hazel as king over Aram. Sometimes it is only in isolation that we can hear the small voice through which God speaks to us. Spirit of God, calm the turmoil in our souls that we can hear your still, small voice. Amen.
remember to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the of God. In his own life, Jesus shared the experience of having no place to fall home, no family, no security. Lord Jesus, you know what it's like to be ruthless. Give each of us a way of putting down roots where we can grow. Near, 
and there is no one to help. Even Jesus knew the feeling of being abandoned by God, the God whom he had believed in, and of being left alone in his darkness. Spirit of God, shine like this candle in the darkness, lighting the way for all who feel abandoned, forsaken, and forgotten.
even as we draw nearer to our remembrance of Christ's birth, we still come to the table and recall why he was born. His disciples were probably unsure of what he was doing when he met with them in the upper room. He uncovered a loaf of bread and he took it. He blessed it, he prayed over it, and then he broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to your table on this longest of nights, grateful that you came to shine light into our darkness. We remember that as you walked this earth in human form, you knew all the emotions we feel. As we eat this bread, we remember your love for us that was so great that you chose to die so that by believing in you, we can spend eternity with you. Thank you for your great love and compassion. Be with each of us as we prepare to celebrate your coming into our world. And help us to remember that you are Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. And in the same way, he took the cup. And after pouring, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink, for this cup is the new covenant which is poured out for the forgiveness of all. Let us pray. Father, as we come to this table tonight to partake of the cup, we come knowing we are blessed because there are so many who know of you. But, Father, our concern is that there are so few who actually know you. And it's through this knowledge of you that we gather faith. And it is only through faith that we're able to withstand the pain and the suffering that life brings to us. As we go through this coming week, and as we remember Christ's birth, we ask your blessings on each and every one here. Give them the faith necessary for relief of pain. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. <laughs>
I don't think I put out enough candles. And I hope you see those lights. For though there are not many here, each one of us is hurting. Each one of us has experienced pain. Each one of us is broken. And yet we believe in a God who picks up the pieces, our broken pieces, and puts them together and makes them more perfect and more whole, more wonderful and more renewed. And the last time I checked, broken crown is still color. But these lights brighten our night a little bit more. And if we remember the good news of God's gospel, we know that Jesus Christ came to us born in an animal full stable, wrapped in rags used on people's feet, laid in a manger full of animal drool, he came to us not in and through perfection. He was born into a world where there's manure, disease spreading flies, where life often overwhelmingly stinks. And that is the good news. The light in the darkness, in the mess, in the muck, in the stable manure. Christmas is the reality of Jesus, the Son of God, being into, born into a world that is deeply broken, deeply hurting. A world that needed and still needs redemption and healing. The good news is that God did not turn away from the imperfections, but instead immersed God's self into them. The good news is that Jesus is the light that shines in and through the darkness, and the darkness cannot and will not overcome it. Christmas is not about denying what is going on in our lives. It's not about denying our brokenness, our pain, and our hurt, but it is instead about recognizing that every single time Jesus joins us and is with us, Jesus' presence brings light, it brings healing, it brings forgiveness, renewal, peace. This season is about owning our troubles and recognizing that we are never alone. God is with us. Emmanuel. So take that good news as you go from this place and reflect on the light that is your life. 